My name is Dave Wilhelm. I am a professor at Wake Technical Community College in Raleigh, North Carolina. I teach business, management, and entrepreneurship courses to both seated and online classes. This video is part of an effort to give my online students the same information that my seated students get, especially in areas where perhaps the text uh, may not provide as much information as I would like, and where it's difficult to put it down in, in writing and have them get the same information. This was actually going to be a presentation on profit and break even, but it turned out to get large enough that I thought it was better to break it up into a profit presentation and a different break even presentation. The topics we'll cover are costs, certainly what kind of costs are involved in looking at profit and later break even. How do you calculate the profit? It's pretty simple if you make enough simplifying assumptions, which we do. I've got some exercises for you. A straight markup, percentage of variable cost, and percentage of selling price. Variable cost and the selling price. And then toward the end, we'll include startup costs, which most of the time we'll be neglecting. So cost, startup costs, fixed costs and variable costs. The startup costs are those one-time costs that will happen when we're setting up a business and won't recur, at least not for quite a while. The fixed costs are those costs that are going to happen every month, regardless of whether we make any product and sell it or not. And variable costs are the ones that vary depending on the number we make. So fixed costs, salary people, rent, typically phone service, uh, lights, electricity, <laughs> uh, variable costs, direct labor that's involved in the manufacturing process or perhaps selling if it can be tracked to the individual products. Uh, certainly the parts that go into the products. So here's the profit. Profit equals quantity times margin minus fixed cost. Pretty simple. It really is. It does make some assumptions. One is that we're talking about a single product. Most companies make more than one product. Uh, at least different sizes of one product. So um, a bit unrealistic, but uh, it's a starting point. We also assume that you sell all you make. That is, nothing goes to inventory. Keep in mind, this is looking at profit from a business standpoint, not an accounting standpoint. Uh, accountants will shudder at some of this stuff. But for business, it's pretty good. And it's going to ignore startup costs, except that at the very end, we will mention startup costs and how to incorporate them. Margin. Remember that margin. That's what we multiply the quantity by. And it's basically how much more you can sell something for than what it costs you to make it. Margin can be quoted in a dollar amount. In other words, for every one we make, let's mark our cost up by four bucks and sell it for that. It can be quoted as a percent of cost. Let's have a 50% markup on everything that comes into the store to sell it. So if it comes in for 10 bucks, uh, with a 50% margin, we'll sell it for $15. Or it can be quoted as a percent of the selling price. In other words, anything we sell, we want to have a 50% margin on. 
also known as Barca, unit profit, or price minus variable cost. Uh, in the problems and examples I'm doing, we will uh, calculate the markup and then go into the formula. So basic equation, selling price, what you're selling it to somebody for, is going to be your cost. In manufacturing, we call it variable cost. In retailing and wholesaling, it still makes sense plus margin. So selling price equals variable cost plus margin. And if you turn it around, variable cost equals selling price minus margin, or margin equals selling price minus variable cost. So here's an exercise for you. Determine the monthly profit when you sell 1,300 items you make a profit of $5.50 on each item sold, and you have monthly fixed costs of $5,400. Now here's how you can do this. You can either just keep the video going and watch the solution, or you can pause it, see if you can calculate the answer on your own, and then restart the video yourself. There are going to be three problems. And this is the first one. So I'll count to five and give you a chance to pause it, and then I'll start going again. Profit, remember, is quantity times the margin minus fixed cost. In this case, we have quantity of 1300 margin of $5.50. Fixed cost of $5,400. $1,300 times $550 is $7,150 minus $5,400. So our profit in this case is $1,750. If the margin is quoted to us as a percent of the variable cost, Determine the monthly profit when you sell 1,400 items. Each item costs $8.50 to make. Your margin is 40% of variable cost, and you have monthly fixed costs of $3,800. The same calculations would apply if the margin was some percentage of the selling price so we're only going to do one. We're not going to do the others. That would get kind of boring. So the margin is the percent times the variable cost, or 40% times $8.50, which comes to $3.40. Plug that into the profit equation, and we get 1400 times $3.40 minus $3,800 or $960. If we know the variable cost of the selling price, this might be one of the favorite ones because you can manipulate the selling price up and down a little bit to see how your profit will vary. In this case, determine the monthly profit when you sell 1,900 items for $13 each. Each one costs $5.50 to make, and you have monthly fixed cost of $5,600. Once again, calculate the margin. And in this case, it's selling price minus variable cost, $13 minus $5.50. So we have a margin of $7.50. There's that profit equation again. Quantity times margin minus fixed cost, $1,900 times $7.50. 
minus $5,600 or $8,000. Or $8,650 is the profit in this case. Here's, just for the fun of it, another selling price variable cost. This time you sell 1,200 items for $11 each. Each one costs $6.50 to make and you have monthly fixed costs of $5,400. Margin, selling price minus variable cost, $11 minus $6.50, leaves us with a unit profit of $4.50. Profit, 1,200 times $4.50 minus $5,400. So the profit, whoops, is zero. We didn't make a profit. This is what is referred to as the break-even point. It actually has a name. And it's the point at which revenue equals expenses, which means you don't have a profit, but neither do you have a loss. It's right at zero. That's the break-even point. There's a separate presentation on the break-even analysis. Remember I promised you earlier we take a look at startup costs, and here we are. What, what can you do with startup costs for calculating profit or later on break-even costs? Well, you can ignore them. You can figure there's a sunk cost. It's not going to affect me. On the other hand, uh, it is an investment in the business that perhaps you should take account of somehow. So you can't ignore it. There's something called payback analysis where you look at any capital investment and look at how long it takes to recoup that investment by either um, decreased expenses or increased revenue. But we're always looking at the after-tax impact of both the purchase and the operating changes. Or we could consider it a fixed cost for some number of months. That is, recognize the startup costs, allocate them across some period of time, add them to fixed costs, uh, and then forget about it when we've got it, quote, paid off. So if it's a cash investment, we can spread the cost for some period of time. Pick your favorite time. Uh, it does ignore the time cost of money, but for a short period of time, that's, that's not a big effect. If we borrow the amount and we're paying them off, it might actually be a little bit cleaner, and then if it's a five-year loan, we'll spread the allocation out over five years, if it's two years, over two years, and so forth. Uh, and that will be including the interest of principal, but again, for a short period of time, the time value of money is not going to have an overwhelming effect. Here's an example, no problems on the startup cost, but you can certainly do your own if you wish. So it's actually based on the first variable cost and selling price problem. So determine the monthly profit when you sell 1,900 items for $13 each. Each one costs $5.50 to make. You have monthly fixed costs of $5,600. Startup costs were $11,500. And you plan to allocate the startup costs over two years. margin, just like the original problem, is $7.50. Selling price minus variable cost, 13 minus 550, $7.50. The startup cost per month is the $11,500. 
divided by 24, and that's equal to $4.97. The profit now is quantity times the margin minus the fixed cost plus the startup cost per month allocation, which is $4.97. So the profit is 1900 times $7.50 minus 5600 plus 497 or $6,097. Profit is $8,153 for the first two years. Once we're done allocating the startup costs, the the profit per month will be back up to the uh, larger amount. And that larger amount was $8,650. And it just so happens that $8,153 is exactly $497 less than the previous amount which should not be surprising. After the two years, then the monthly profit will be back to $8,600 because we advertise the entire startup cost amount. That was a look at profit. I'm Dave Wilhelm at Wake Technical Community College in Raleigh, North Carolina. I hope this has helped you understand profit. If this whetted your appetite, you can also watch the break-even analysis video.